On December 8, 1895, the Boston Sunday Post published an article titled The Wonders of Modern Science that presented astonished readers with reports from the so-called Royal Scientific Society documenting the existence of marvels and monsters hitherto believed imaginary. The human freaks supposedly cataloged by the British scientists included a mermaid, a terrifying human crab, and the unfortunate Edward Mordrake, who would soon become an enduring urban legend. The myth of Edward Mordrake begins. As the Post reported, Edward Mordrake was a young, intelligent, and good-looking English nobleman, as well as a musician of rare ability. But with all of his great blessings came a terrible curse. In addition to his handsome, normal face, Mordrake possessed a terrifying disfigurement, another face on the back of his head. This horrifying second face was that of a beautiful girl, lovely as a dream, hideous as a devil. The strange visage possessed an intelligence of a malignant sort. Whenever Mordrake cried, the second face would smile and sneer. Mordrake was constantly plagued by his devil twin, which kept him up all night whispering such things as they only speak of in hell. The young lord was eventually driven mad and took his own life at the age of 22, leaving behind a note ordering the evil face be destroyed after his death, lest it continues its dreadful whispering in my grave. In 1896, American doctors George M. Gould and Walter L. Pyle included the Mudrake Street in their book, Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine, a collection of peculiar medical cases. Gould and Pyle were legitimate ophthalmologists with successful medical practices, but they seem to have been quite gullible in at least one case, as the story of Edward Mudrake was fake. Investigating the truth behind the man with two faces. As Alex Bose's blog Museum of Hoax diligently deduced in 2015, the author of the original Post article, Charles Lottin Hildreth, was a poet and science fiction writer. His stories tended toward the fantastical and otherworldly. But just because an article is written by someone who tends to write fiction, that doesn't mean the article itself is fiction. Still, there are many clues that point to the Mudrake story's falsity. For one, Hildreth's article cites the Royal Scientific Society as its source for its numerous bizarre medical cases, but an organization by that name didn't exist in the 19th century. The Royal Society of London was a centuries-old scientific institution, but there was nothing both royal and scientific by name in the Western world. While not actual, the name was indeed plausible, which gave Hildreth's story an extra air of believability. Secondly, Hildreth's article appears to be the first time any of the medical cases he describes have ever appeared in any literature, scientific or otherwise. The Royal Society of London's entire database is searchable online, and Bose wasn't able to find any of Hildreth's anomalies in its archives, from the Norfolk spider, a human head with six hairy legs, to the fish woman of Lincoln, a mermaid-type creature. When we realized this, Bose wrote, that's when it becomes apparent that Hildreth's article was fiction. All of it sprang from his imagination, including Edward Mordake. It turns out that newspapers in the late 19th century weren't held to the same editorial standards as today. They were sources of both information and entertainment, and frequently filled with fictional tales presented as non-fiction. Hildreth's tales weren't irresponsible journalism, per se, they were just written convincingly enough to fool a couple of doctors, and to endure in the public imagination for more than a century. Hildreth died mere months after his article was published, however, and so he didn't get to see just quickly the American public was fooled by his wild creativity. Thanks for watching and subscribe us for more videos. Have a good day.